going on guys? It's Unchained here and I'm going to give you guys a little overview on the Xbox One and the PS4. And then I'm going to give my opinions on which one I think should be purchased first. If not, which one won the overall launch. Um, now obviously as you know the PS4 came out first and despite this I got this for free with the buy two get one free Amazon deal. The only two games that you can get that are first party on the PS4 that are only playable on PS4 is Knack and Killzone Shadowfall. Obviously we're ignoring Resogun and a couple other digital downloads. These are the only two physical games that you can pick up for the PS4. They're honestly pretty good. Knack didn't get rated all that well, but I actually really enjoy it. It's kind of the reason why I picked up Rise for my Xbox One. I mean, I'm not going to go ahead and judge launch games by the reviews. Most of the time, launch titles don't do all that well because critics have such high expectations on what's considered next-gen or innovative. When consoles first come out, it's always going to be really rocky. Whether it's a hardware issue, the games don't really show their true potential, or just a bunch of sequels and ports that you could have generally played on the current-gen units. So let's go over the controllers first. The PS4 controller is a step up from the PS3. It's definitely way better. The PS button clearly was never in the way of any of the start or select buttons. You'll notice the start and select buttons are now known as options up here. You can't really see with this lighting. There it is. And share. That helps you uh, record some footage and edit and trim and all that good stuff. This is the touchpad. It's actually a spongy button here. So you can press that in and it actually doesn't click, which kind of works out pretty well. And then the LED bar, which is actually on now because I have a game running in the background. The biggest difference that they had here with the PS4 DualShock 4 controller is the R2 and L2 triggers. They tried to put them a little closer to your fingers to encourage you to want to use these buttons for like aiming and this one here for uh, for shooting. But I always just, by habit, I always set R1 to shoot because it always seems like my hand has to curve in order to hit that R2 button. So I don't think it's really all that great for first person shooters. The analog sticks though are convex with your thumbs and they're very comfortable. So would I recommend using this over the DualShock 3? Definitely. Now, as far as the Xbox One controller is concerned, it's definitely a big difference from the 360. I thought it was going to feel pretty much the same. Right off the bat, you'll notice the D-pad's way better. Each of these directionals click in. It feels perfect. The analog sticks feel pretty good, too, because unlike the PS4 controller, where the inside like bowl where the analog sticks are, it shoots up, kind of like the bowl's upside down. This one is like where the bowl is right side up. So it kind of curves in with your fingers better when you put your thumbs on the analog sticks. It kind of sinks in, and it just feels right. Now, the one major improvement is the Xbox Guide button is way up here now, so you're not going to accidentally press it when you're hitting the Start or Select buttons, which are now known as Menu and something else, I don't know. But it pretty much acts as the Back and Start buttons, just like the uh, 360. As far as the analogs, or not the analog sticks, as far as the triggers are concerned, I have to say the... RT and LT triggers feel a thousand times better than the 360. I didn't think it would matter so much. I know they have impulse triggers, which is essentially little motors built under the triggers, but it just feels right. You push it down, it's very, very loose, very sensitive. You don't have to put any pressure on it for it to go down. One of my biggest gripes with this controller are the LB and the RB buttons. It just seems like even though they're like... They're almost built into the controller so well that you need to push them down harder to get them to register. And if you press them directly up here, it's harder than if you had to press it on the sides. So they're not really the best. I mean, as far as the design, it is overall way better than the 360, but they really could have done better with the LB and RB buttons. They should have just had them stick it up like what they did before, because it worked just fine. Now, as far as the launch games are concerned, Call of Duty was an upgrade I got, so that doesn't really count. But really, we're going up against Dead Rising 3 and Rise versus Knack and Killzone Shadowfall. Now, obviously, as I know, there were three first-party games that came out with the Xbox One. There was Dead Rising 3, Rise, and Forza 5. Now, I'm not really a big Forza fan, and, I mean, what better game than to get a Dead Rising 3? It's an action game, and uh, Rise is a new IP, whereas Forza 5 is, like, it just looks exactly like Forza 4. It's not even worth calling it a first party game so really this is what we're versing here now knack is a lot like rise as far as reviews i really enjoyed knack so i picked up rise rise graphically is way better but it's obviously a much shorter game than knack knack is about 11 hours clocked whereas rise is six or less dead rising is a great game i put about six hours into it last night it's honestly, I would say it's worth picking up the Xbox One just for Dead Rising 3. It's really, really fun. Graphically, it's not all that impressive, but as far as the amount of zombies they can render on screen, it's extremely awesome. Killzone's an interesting game. Although it's graphically incredible and it doesn't look like it really could be run all that well on current-gen consoles, 
it, it feels weird. They have this open world feel for each mission. So essentially, after you kill a bunch of guys, a lot of times, I found that I was like roaming around the levels trying to find the next objective. So it felt kind of dead and barren. And they had you doing a lot of things that you really wouldn't want to do in a first person shooter, like putting a bunch of cells in slots or hacking terminals a million times. Like, it, it's not that fun, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Overall, as far as games are concerned, I would say Xbox wins. Now, when I got both consoles hooked up, the PS4 was a million times easier. The initial setup took no time at all, but the biggest problem was the network. The network was down until 4 a.m. that Friday when the console came out. Now, that's pretty embarrassing. It was almost down for 24 hours because people got it at midnight and they couldn't get on either to get the update. So essentially, they couldn't log into their PSN accounts and they couldn't do anything. Now, I give it to the Xbox. I went at midnight. Even then and the day after, this beast had internet connectivity. I might have had a couple of dropouts on Call of Duty or Dead Rising, but overall the connection was fine. You go home, you get the update, it was totally fine. Worked really well. So as far as the controllers, I think the Xbox wins. As far as the games, I think the Xbox wins. As far as the overall launch, I would easily give it to the PlayStation. It's got an easier interface. It's, it takes like two seconds to navigate. When it comes to the Xbox, it's got a big learning curve. Um, Connect is kind of finicky. It works about 50% of the time when you go to use it. And you'll notice it doesn't always snap certain things that you want it to snap. Like, for example, if I say Xbox Snap Skype, it'll snap nothing, actually. If you go to Snap Netflix, it works just fine. There's certain apps that have command built in, but some that don't. So it's a really, I guess unintuitive experience. Most of the time you're just going to want to use a controller, but the dashboard of the 360, I know it's been built up over the years through updates, but clearly in its current state, it's about 10 times better than the Xbox One. It's got that Windows 8 bullshit kind of hidden thing effect where it's like certain tiles should not be behind certain tiles. For example, I should not have to go into games and apps in order to get to my settings. That's stupid. That should be right off the main menu. So overall, the menu system and the over and the interface, just everything, PS4 wins. As far as the overall launch experience and the games and controller, Xbox. But however, this is also 100 bucks cheaper. So it's really up to you what console you decide to get at launch. If you don't have any, well, obviously it's not launch now. It's after it's post launch. Now it's like everybody's trying to find a console at stores. But given the circumstances. Everything considered, I would easily say go PS4 before you go Xbox. They have a lot of kinks that need ironing out. I'm not factoring any hardware failures because it doesn't seem like any of it's widespread. Both companies had a bunch of problems when the consoles released, and it's been getting, you know, I guess resolved over time. Anytime a console releases, it's big news when a disk drive fails like on the Xbox or there's like a blue ring of death on the PlayStation 4. Overall, I haven't had any of these issues. I had a problem with my Xbox One controller where uh, my stupid D-pad was making this really weird buzzing sound every time I clicked on the top of it, and it clearly was like a broken spring. So I had to open it up, which is actually not that hard. You just open the back cover, and you take out the screws that way, and you rip off the sides, and then you do it. And I fixed it myself, and it works just fine. But all I can say is buy at your own risk and make sure you get a warranty. Because if anything's fucked up in your box, you want to make sure you can take it back to GameStop. Just out of curiosity, I called GameStop and I asked them. I'm like, yeah, my controller's messed up. Can I go get another one? They said you have to bring it back to Microsoft. I'm like, okay, fuck you, GameStop. Yeah, always buy it at your own risk when it comes to GameStop. But yeah, overall, I would say get the PlayStation 4 before you get the Xbox. It's definitely going to be a little bit of a rocky road, but we know there's a lot of good games coming. Now, I have, have been having some trouble with my uh, USB hub that I've been using to capture with my capture card so it's only like 10 bucks I got to get another one of those but until then um, that's why I put up this video but once I get that buy a new one from Walmart I'll uh, put some recordings up for the Xbox one and then you'll get to see some dashboard footage hope you enjoy thanks for watching and listening